This is not something I would normally recommend, but it did work out for me. In the tech industry, your code needs to work, but it also needs to follow certain standards. This means where white space can go in your file, the way your variables are named, and a bunch of other stuff to make sure your code is maintainable. The code you write is not something you write once and never see again. You're constantly iterating. You can't be adding dependencies every two seconds. Now to make sure the code you write is working and compliant, there are these things called code reviews. Other developers read through your code before it goes into the main code base, and they leave comments. Kind of like YouTube comments, but slightly more helpful. They might ask you to reorder your imports, or to use this library instead of this other library, or this other method instead of the one you're using. They might also say your code is concerning, or you forgot tests. It's something along those lines to make the code better. Now this process of submitting code for review can be quite intimidating, especially if you're an entry-level developer or you're working on a team with 10 other people. The idea that you submit your code to 10 other developers to then pull apart isn't exactly appealing. Imagine getting a performance review every single day or for each contribution or for each piece of work you do. That's one way to look at code reviews. It's not productive, but it's a perspective. And this was my perspective when I initially joined a large team and had to submit code for review. So naturally, I found a way to avoid these code reviews. I'm someone that's much more bigger picture and less detail oriented, which is probably not good as an engineer, but let's ignore that. So you have to think what code doesn't get reviewed or at least reviewed as thoroughly. Well, infrastructure. When you need to make changes to your infrastructure, it often doesn't get a formal review because it's not version controlled. With infrastructure as code coming up, now it's starting to become more version controlled, but a lot of times it's just configuring something in AWS or Google Cloud Platform. You just do it and you hope the app doesn't break. Also, not many people know how to do it. So when you do have it in a version controlled format, more often than not, developers put looks good to me or LGTM and approve the changes. So that's what I decided to work on infrastructure. And I was able to work on it because not many people knew how to do it and not many people wanted to do it. Everyone likes a comfort zone. I also did not know how to do infrastructure, but I'd rather figure it out in peace rather than go through these code reviews and have everyone see my failures. Now, only two people saw me fail rather than 10. This is classic imposter syndrome. Sure, I was submitting this code for review to 10 people or to the 12 people that were on my team, but were 10 people actually looking at the code? Probably not. Most of them probably saw it and thought, I'll review that later. And by the time they came back, it was probably already approved or someone else started reviewing it. So technically, by avoiding these code reviews and contributing to the infrastructure, I was actually helping the team. Since less people knew how to do it, now by learning it, it diversifies the experience of the team. Sometimes it's not helpful if you have 10 people that know the exact same technologies and nothing else. However, the problem with infrastructure is that if you mess it up, the entire app goes down rather than just a single feature. But let's not worry about that. Another thing that doesn't really get approved as thoroughly are CICD pipelines. These are continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines. These are what get your code from GitHub or Bitbucket or wherever your main code base is living to those servers in the cloud. As a part of these processes, tests might be run on your code or it might be dockerized, it might be packaged in a certain way, and ultimately it will get deployed to those servers via these processes. Another reason that these pipelines don't get reviewed as thoroughly is because they're done with technologies that aren't as common. If you're working on a microservice, you might be familiar with Java and Python and know those really well, but have you worked with Bash? Or have you worked with a different scripting technology that's used in these pipelines? Since less developers are familiar with it, it's often to get that looks good to me approval that we love so much. But is this a good thing? Avoiding code reviews for an extended period period of time by working on technologies that the team is unfamiliar with. Well, it became a good thing for me. In less than a year, the other people that knew infrastructure left, and so now I do the infrastructure. And at that point, I realized I should stop avoiding the main code base. 
and I should start contributing to it. Infrastructure was also getting kind of boring, but by working on infrastructure, I was able to build my confidence and be able to go through those code reviews and contribute to our main product. I was also working with a much smaller team at this point, so the code reviews were less scary. Now, I'm all about the code reviews. They're meant to improve the quality of the code base, but as a side effect, you become a better engineer. So long story short, you can always avoid work you don't wanna do. And sometimes it works out. But at some point, you have to jump out of your comfort zone in order to grow as an engineer. If you also want to avoid code reviews, just like me, check out my infrastructure course on LinkedIn Learning. If you have avoided code reviews in the past and want to become a part of them, then you can also check out this code reviews course also on LinkedIn Learning. Here's a promo code for three free months on LinkedIn Learning and whoever redeems it first, enjoy the free months and let me know which courses you take. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe, and happy coding.